bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we're just about to hear your word. We ask your Holy Spirit, who is going to minister to us today, and we pray that you will prepare our hearts, open our spiritual eyes and ears, that we can hear what you want us to hear today. I commit myself to you to become your mouthpiece, that you're going to speak through me to us today, and we're always going to depend upon you, Holy Spirit, who is our Lord, our guide, our teacher, our comforter, and bless every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, yeah, I, we've got a time there. So are we just going to walk according to the time of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Wherever the Holy Spirit tells us to stop, we stop. Even though we have many things to hear, you know, we as pastors, we have so many things to tell. <laughs> We can continue to talk and talk and talk until you just fed up of hearing. Because that's what we have been called to do, to teach, to preach the word of God. As you have heard about my story, I was a pastor in Fiji, and then I was called to become a missionary to Papua New Guinea. For five years, I was there. Then I, was, then I went back and started a ministry of counseling back in our nation. So today let us turn to our scripture reading in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. It says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That is Paul's desire. He wanted to know more of Jesus. Not only Jesus, he wants to know more about his suffering and also about his resurrection. So that's what we're going to hear today. We're going to hear about more about Jesus, who is Jesus, that you must know. Because your faith and my faith will always going to be determined by how you know Jesus. The more you know Jesus, the more your faith is going to be. It's going to become strong. That you can move mountains. You can have master seed faith. That is why it's so important for us to know Jesus more than anything else. Because Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. First, that we're going to know more about him. If we look into 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. We know we normally use this scripture for Holy Communion. In verse 25 says, In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat, this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This cup is the new covenant. One of the spiritual meaning, meanings of covenant is a will. And we know that will is only valid when the person who writes it died. So who is, whose, whose will is yours today? And we believe it is Jesus' will. Because today we can agree together 
and he died, buried, and resurrected. And he is in heaven praying for you and me. So we are the beneficiaries of his will. So the will belongs to you now. But we must know one thing. That his will has condition. If you want to be one of the beneficiaries of his will, you need to meet the condition. And I believe that you want to know what is that condition, Pastor. Let us read Psalm 91. I know that we don't have to read it. We all know that Psalm. Many times we claim that Psalm in our prayers. And I know you can recite that Psalm very well. It says in one. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There are 16 verses. They are all promises of God that what God will do for you. So the key to all those promises that is mentioned in the 16 verses is the first Portion of the first, first verse, which says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom, in whom I will trust. Then you continue on with Psalm 91. It's so wonderful to hear what Psalm 91 says. And we all want to have that Psalm, to be true in our life, in our everyday walk with God. And we often claim it every day. Lord, I claim Psalm 91 today to be my Psalm. And I cancel every negativity in my life. And I claim Psalm 91 to be my Psalm today. But let me tell you now, the key to that is in that first portion of the verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. I was asking God for some, some times. It was how many years I've been asking God. God, can you tell me? Because after reading that, I found out the key to all the rest is in verse 1. And I really want God to tell me, God, I want to know what is that secret place of the Most High. One night I was sleeping and I heard a voice from God. The secret place of the Most High is Christ in you. Let me repeat that once again. I heard that voice. The secret place of the Most High is Christ in you. When Christ lives in you, you have every right to claim all those scriptures. Even the last one, that God will bless you with long life. And that's what I'm claiming. And I believe that you are also claiming that. To go to 100 years. But the Lord is coming very soon. I don't think so. Some of you are going to reach 100 So when we have Christ, we can claim all the will of Jesus. And the Bible says, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of Jesus. His death makes it valid for you. That you can claim what rightly belongs to you. The will of Jesus is now yours. You are the partaker. You are one of the beneficiaries. 
You benefit from all what he did for you and me on the cross. So many things he did for you and me. He died for our sin. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 5.20, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for you, to be sin for us. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Your sin and my sin, God put it into Jesus so that we can become the righteousness of God in him. The first will is, you are righteous in Jesus Christ. The righteous that we don't work for. The righteous given freely as a gift. The moment you believe in Jesus Christ, you are righteous. If anyone believes in Jesus Christ, confesses sin. If he dies the next moment, he enters heaven. A baby who is born, whether what kind of religion, if he's one year old or five months or five months old, he gets to heaven. He goes to heaven. That is the grace of God. It's not only a Christian baby will go to heaven. Let me tell you this. That's what the Lord revealed to me one day. I say, man, what a grace is God. We think only the babies of the Christian will go to heaven. The baby of every people in the world, every human being. But before one down, maybe one or, one or two, two years, I do not know. But there is a place in heaven kept mostly for them. Somebody heard, somebody went and saw and said, these are the children from Muslim, from Hindus, from Buddhists, even from atheists. This is called the grace of God. When we look at the cross, we see Jesus, death on the cross, that gives you the right to claim what rightly belongs to you. If you are sick, claim your healing. Whatever need that you have, claim it, because you are the right beneficiary to that. Isn't that wonderful? The only thing that you must make sure that Christ must continually live in your heart. And Satan is after that. Satan is after your Christ. He wants to take away Christ from you. Because at the cross, he was defeated. At the cross, Satan was defeated. And you are more powerful than the devil. God has given us power and authority. Don't you know, Revelation 1, 6, that we are called priests, and king, you are a priest, you are king. King means you have a, a domain to rule. You are a priest that you can pray directly to God. You don't need another priest to stand in between. You go straight to God and say, God, I want this, I want that. You are a priest, a king. That is the will of Jesus. And you are the partake of that will. You must give thanks unto the Lord. Today is supposed to be the day of celebration. We're supposed to be thanking God. For his son Jesus Christ, he gave it to me. When you have Christ in you, you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 11 to 13 says, This is the message that God has given us, eternal life. God has already given you the eternal life. Not when you die and you reach heaven, then you know, let me see whether I have eternal life or not. If Christ lives inside of you, you have eternal life. And this eternal life is in his son. He who has the son has this life. But who has not the son has not this life. Therefore, Christ in you qualifies you to be the citizen of heaven. He don't belong here. He belongs to heaven. We are here as a tourist, a pilgrim. We are just moving on. We are moving through this world because we are going to another city whose maker and builder is God. That is our blessed hope. But the Lord is coming back very soon. Sooner than what we think. 
to come and take his bride. You are the bride of Jesus Christ. Aren't you happy that you are qualified to become the bride of Jesus? Who am I, Lord? How worthy am I to be called the bride of Jesus? That, was, that is because of his love. That is because of his grace. You are the bride of Jesus Christ. He is coming to take you. The Bible says, when the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first and put on the incorruptible body. We who have the, the mortal body will put on the immortal body. He will never die. He will go straight, the Bible says, and they shall be caught up together in the cloud and meet the Lord in the air. You know what? You are the Rebecca of Isaac. Isaac is Jesus Christ. Rebecca is you and me. You know where did they meet? They didn't meet. They didn't meet in Isaac's home. They didn't even meet in Rebecca's home. Where did they meet? Who can tell me? Where did they meet? Isaac left his home. Rebecca left his home. And where did they meet? In the field. That is the sky. The sky is our meeting place with our Lord Jesus Christ. If the Lord comes right now, that mortal body will put on an immortal body that dies no more, that is not subjected to death, not even to sickness, whatever. And you shall be caught up together with those who are dead in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Not all those who are dead there in the graveyard. Only those who are dead in Christ. They shall be caught up and put up and put on an incorruptible body. And then we shall be, and then we shall caught up together in the cloud and meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. That's what he said in James in John 14. If you believe in God, believe also in me. I'll go and prepare a place for you. And I'll come back and take you where I am, that you can also be where I am. We shall be together with the Lord forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. It's just about to happen. It's just about to happen. It's just about to happen. It is just about to happen. I do not know when. Could be now. Could be tomorrow. Could be next month. Only thing we can know, the Lord's coming is very near. As I have said, today is supposed to be the day of celebration. See what the Lord did for us, so many. He did so many things for you and me. Things that you were not entitled to before. We were sinners, we are the Gentiles, the outcast. But because of Jesus, because of God's grace, you are counted to be like one of the spiritual Israelites. That's why we always want to back up the Israelites. Pray for them. Then if you go against the Israelites, then you are not in the kingdom of God. Everyone in the kingdom of God will always support Israel. Because they are our brothers. They are our sisters. Their time will come later. But our time, our time comes first. That is the rapture. As I've said, we'll just go according to the time of the Holy Spirit. We have so many things to know. I was praying to God and the Lord in the night spoke to me and said, the secret place is Christ in you. Then I started to look into the scripture. In Colossians, Are you happy? 
You're supposed to be happy, smiling, praising. And even you can be walking around dancing and praising God. And this is what the Lord said to me that night. After I heard that voice, Christ in you, then I look into the Bible in 1 Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. It says, For it pleased the Father that in him, Jesus Christ, all the fullness should, should dwell, should dwell. In Christ, all the fullness of God dwelling in Christ. Let me tell you this. This is good news. This Christ, who has that fullness, who has that fullness of God, as it, as it says in Ephesians chapter 3, that Christ that has the fullness of God. Do you want that? Do you want the fullness of God? Where is that fullness of God? In Christ. That fullness is in Christ. But the good news is, in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 says, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Oh, hallelujah, glory be to God. Through faith. If you have faith now, Christ dwells inside of you. Revelation 3.20, he's knocking at the door. If you are sitting here, you haven't received Jesus Christ into your heart. Every word that is preached from here, it is Jesus knocking. He who hears his voice, he hears his knocking. He who hears his knocking opens the door. He comes in. And dine with him. That is personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He's very personal. He's coming to you personally. To have a personal relationship with you. So Christ is not only coming to act like a big man and acting like I am the boss. No, he comes. He listens to you. He respects your freedom of choice. But he hopes that you don't choose wrongly. You always choose according to the will of God. That is why he gives you the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will guide you and help you to know where you need to go. To know what you need to do. Holy Spirit is our guide, our teacher, our comforter. So the Holy Spirit in you is Christ in you. Then after that, it says, furthermore, that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Not only Christ having the fullness of God, you having the fullness of God. It says here, be filled with all the fullness of God, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Man, I have the fullness of God driving in this car, living in this place, having the fullness of God. I must be special. Yeah, you are special. You are God's child. Whatever you ask him in his name, he hears, he answers. We are so privileged. That was made possible because of his death on the cross. The moment we partake on this holy communion, we are reminded of his death. The moment you see his death, you know, I have the will of Jesus. I have the will of Jesus. I can dance. I can sing. I can jump around. If I die today, I make it to heaven. If the Lord comes now, I am one of them. 
Because Christ lives inside of you. Christ who has the fullness living inside of you. No wonder the Bible says you have the fullness of God. Colossians, then the, the scripture the Lord showed to me again. Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1 verse 26. The mystery which has been hidden from ages. What is that mystery? Mystery hidden during David's time, during Abraham's time, during Noah's time, during other prophets, Isaiah, Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. This mystery was hidden in their time. The mystery which has been hidden from ages, from generation, but now has been revealed to his saints. You are his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery. See the definition of, of this grace, of this mystery. The riches of the glory of this mystery. This mystery is so glorious, so riches. Hallelujah. The glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. You have, you have every right to have your hope in God. So Christ becomes your everything. He is my Je Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals, God who heals. If you are sick, right inside of you, right inside, your, inside of you, lives Jehovah Rapha. Your doctor, your physician, your healer. Call upon his name. Believe in his word. Trust his word. He will receive your healing because he is your healer, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. 1 Peter 2, 24. By his stripes you were healed. Let me tell you a story. First year in Papua New Guinea, I was very sick. I supposed to die by that sickness. My wife and my daughter, you know my daughter, knelt at the bedside and they cried and they prayed and they cried and they prayed till morning. But I was still in pain. I was rolling from the side of the bed to the other side. I couldn't bear it anymore. It's so painful. The only thing that thought that came to my mind, Lord, take my life. It's unbearable. As I was just thinking about that, I heard, I saw a vision written in the sky like this. Started from this side. By his stripes, you were healed. When it came to the word war, it strikes like a red light. And it caught my attention. Jesus knew. It caught my attention. Then he said to me, what do you know about that word war? W-E-R-E, -E, war. I said, done. Well, your healing done. That is the work of the devil. Just stand up and fight the devil. Cast him out, which I did. I stood up. I cast the devil out in the name of Jesus, which is your right. This sign shall follow them that believe they shall cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Don't you know that you are powerful than, than the devil? The devil is afraid of you. But the devil can know whether you really afraid of whether he afraid whether you are afraid of him or he is afraid of you. He knows it. And I stood up, cast the devil out. To the surprise of my family members, I walk healthy to the living room. That was in 2003, and I'm still alive today. Because of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. He was so broken. 
Let me explain a bit further how he died on the cross. A traditional Roman whip contained metal. It was the custom of the Romans to beat a person, especially a prisoner, three quarters, three quarters to death. The purpose of that whip to cause three quarters of death to the person. That's why they put the metal in that whip. And that was done to Jesus. And that metal will cut into the flesh right to the bone. And bring the flesh out from the bone. That happened to Jesus. Have you seen passions for Christ? That was what actually happened to him. He suffered for you. He endured, that, he endured that suffering. He endured that suffering. Because he was thinking of you. One day you're going to become sick. So if you are sick, think about the will of Jesus. He gave you the right to claim your healing. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Touch that part of your body that is sick. Oh, ask a man of God, please, would you please lay your hands on me? I want to be healed. That is your right. That is the will of Jesus given to you. No wonder he could not carry that cross to the top. Because he was almost three quarter dead. Thank God for Simon the, the Syrian who came. He was standing there as one of the sight sinners. That he was called by the Roman soldiers, come carry the cross. Because he was almost three quarter dead. Then he was nailed with the thorny branches pressed down on his head. Think about the pain that he went through just because you and me were on his mind. Because you and me were on his mind. He was thinking of you. One day you're going to become sick. One day you're going to need help. One day you're going to be in trouble. One day the devil is going to be aftering you. Going to go after you. But he endured it all. That you can have the joy. Hebrew 12, the Bible says too. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Your joy, my joy. The joy of God the Father. Because of the joy, he endured the pain of the cross. And the good news is, the Bible says, all those who believe in Jesus, baptized in Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are buried to his death. If you are buried together with him, him in that grave, you are in that water grave. The Bible says, if we are together in his burial, we shall also be, to, be together in his resurrection. This, resur this resurrection day is not only Jesus, it's you and me resurrected together. This word together Raised together with the Lord. And where? Made to sit together with the Lord. Now, do you know where you are sitting with Jesus? In the heavenly places. That is your realm. This is not our realm. Heavenly places. Far above all principalities, powers, dominion and might. And every name that is named. Sickness has a name. COVID has a name. That's why so many people, they turn to Jesus Christ in North Korea. Today, 400,000, more than 400,000 converts in Korea. Because during the COVID, they had no hope. And they turned to Jesus. All those who turned to Jesus, they were healed from COVID. That's why we have more than 400,000 Christians born again in Korea, North Korea today. That is because of the grace of God.
He suffered so much for you and me. Because when he was there on the cross, he endured all these pains and suffering inflicted upon his body because he was thinking of you, thinking about your salvation, thinking about your healing, thinking about your deliverance, think about the healing of your broken spirit. Today, so many men from 50 down, they are committing suicide. I got that from the internet. Because men, we have a stigma. We cannot bear shame. The only way out from being shameful in the community, take my life away. But I thank God for the woman, women. They can bear, they can take the two extremes. They can be good, they can be bad. But man, they cannot take that, that stigma, that disgrace. The only thing they will do is just end their life. That is what we are hearing today. So Jesus Christ died on the cross for the broken spirit. If you are broken in your spirit, you are hurt, you are wounded because of some kind of rejection. You are not loved, you are rejected. And you are wounded in your spirit. Jesus suffered that death so that you can be healed. So today, if you are hearing my voice, if you are here tonight, today, Jesus died for the healing of your broken spirit. Because of his love for you. And I have a song to sing. Because when we know how much the Lord has done for me. I have so many things to share, but I look at the time, I'm going to be winding down. I have so many things to share. If God gives me another privilege, I'll continue. But I know whatever we have heard today is good for us now. When we look at Jesus, we can say, he is my everything. He is my all. I was asking my son-in-law to come and play that song. He's here this morning. Jesus is here. It's my son-in-law coming to play this song. I know some of you know this song. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything, both great and small. I love my Jesus. And I do not want to lose him. But the devil, your enemy, is after your Jesus. Please, don't lose Jesus like... Judas, he sold his Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Don't be like Peter who denied his Jesus because of fear and shame. Don't worry about what people say or think. He we will carry the shame of Jesus. My everything. If you know, let us sing together. He is my my everything more great and small he gave his life for me made everything new he is my everything um, like honey in the rock. Like honey, honey in, in the, the rock. rock. Sweet honey in the rock. Sweet honey in the rock. Jesus tasted like honey in the rock. For he tastes like honey in the rock. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. 
For he tastes like honey in the rock. For he tastes like honey in oh, the rock. Oh, taste and see rock. that he is Lord. He is the Lord. Is good. The Lord oh, is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord he is good. For he tastes he like honey tastes in the rock. Let us all stand, please. Like honey. We'll sing it again if you can. If you know, can we sing together? Can we all stand up? He is my Let us all sing together if you know. He, he is oh, my yes. all. He is my everything. More great and small. He gave his life for me. He gave his life for me. Made everything new. Made everything new. He is my everything. He is my everything. Now, how about you? How, how about you? Like honey in the rock. Like honey in the rock. Oh, glory to God. Sweet honey in the rock. Sweet honey in the rock. For he tastes like honey in the rock. For he tastes like honey in the rock. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. For he tastes like honey in the rock. the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, in the rock. For he tastes like honey in the rock. For he tastes like honey in the rock. And us all pray. Open your heart to Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Today, I will make a decision that I will never, ever leave you, Lord. I will never, ever sell you again like Judas. I will never, ever have denial, Lord, because of fear of man. Lord, we now know we have something so precious that cannot be compared to any value in this world. We have something very special, Lord. We go back home, we know I'm going with the fullness of God. God has given me every right to be the partake of his will. And I'm sitting with you, Jesus, in the heavenly places. Reigning as king and priest. Lord, help me to have that Holy Spirit in me to give me strength to become an overcomer, to pass every test, to overcome every temptation. So help us, Lord. If anything that we will treasure in our life is not money, is nothing else but Jesus Christ. He must never leave us. And I do not want, Lord, to lose you. I go back home today, I know I have something very, very special. Father, we thank and we bless you. Go with us today, bless our hearts, and let this word continue to ring over and over again to remind us of who we are in Christ. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor. Not forgetting to ask for forgiveness. If you are here with me, say after me, Lord Jesus, I ask for your forgiveness for all the sins that I have committed. Pray for your precious blood. Cleanse me, Lord. Lord, I open up my heart. I invite you into my heart. Come in Jesus. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Give me your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, we thank and we bless you. In Jesus' name, and all of us agree and say amen and amen. God bless you all.